Hello, hello. In this tutorial, we are going to explore how to use a stack of modifiers to create an awesome braided wrap for your next project. You will learn how to use the screw modifier, curves, solidify, shrink wrap and displace in unison, and how to use a vertex groups and weight paint to control each one of these. For this wrap, I am going to use my base sculpt for my Cobra Wand series, but you can use any object you like, as long as it has a somewhat cylindrical shape. However, the Cobra Wand is a good example to show that the surface doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. The modifiers we'll be using will adapt to any surface. The first step involves using the screw modifier to create this overlapping zigzag pattern. For this, I'll start with a plane that I'll rotate along the x-axis by 90 degrees and scale it to roughly the final size. Then position it near the surface and delete one side of the vertices so that you're left with just two aligned vertically. To work with the screw modifier, we have to do two very important things. First, apply the rotation and scale with Ctrl A and second, align the origin, this orange dot, with the world origin. Right click and set the origin to the 3D cursor. Now we can add the screw modifier and adjust the screw value so that the object has an angle of about 45 degrees. Let me move our object down slightly, as it's easier to delete access vertices later than finding the correct Z position now. Increase the number of iterations to roughly the length you want it to be and again we'll delete the axis later. By the way, if you want to learn the screw modifier in detail, check out my series on all the Blender modifiers. Let's increase the resolution of our object to make it easier to weight paint later. Organizing our objects is crucial now, as the upcoming steps can get a bit chaotic. We'll name the first one Rep01. Now we are going to create 8 of these objects, each with different values. Duplicate the first one and rename it. This one needs to be rotated on the z-axis by 180 degrees and let's hide our surface for now, as we won't be needing it immediately. You should end up with something like this, two ribbons intersecting like a cross. Now, duplicate both objects, rename them and change the angle in the screw modifier to minus 360 degrees. It should look like this. Now select all four, duplicate them and rename them once more. When you switch to the front view, move objects 5 to 8 up the z-axis to about the center of this diamond shape. You can use the grid for measurement. Now select all eight objects and enter edit mode. We'll close the gaps by increasing the size of our base geometry. If you select all vertices by pressing A, you can scale them on the z-axis by pressing Z twice. But for this to work, we have to change the pivot point from the center of all vertices to the center of each object individually. Now scale it again until you have just tiny gaps left between the objects. That's it for the screw modifier. Let's apply the modifier to all objects by converting them into a mesh. This way you won't need to select each object and apply the modifier one by one. Select all objects, apply the rotation and scale, then click on Object, Convert, Mesh. This is the topology you're left with, but we will need more vertices to continue. So I'm going to add about 10 edge loops on each object, then we can begin wrapping our handle. First off, we need to shape our objects to fit the handle. To do this, we can use the curve modifier to adjust it to the handle's curved shape. Start by creating a new Bezier curve, then jump straight into edit mode. We need to shift the control points to the top and bottom areas where we want our wrap to start and finish. If you're new to working with curves, I highly recommend checking out my tutorial on curves. Curves are a vital aspect of 3D modeling and animation. Mastering them is a must. Once you have moved the top and bottom control points, select the first object and add a curve modifier. Pick the curve, the z-axis, and now you can tweak the curve's control points to approximately match the handle's shape. You can duplicate the modifier along with all its settings by selecting all your objects, then lastly the one with the modifier. Next, press Ctrl L, think L4 Link, easy to remember, and click on Copy Modifiers. 
Now it's your turn to generate as many control points as you need to form the shape. And you can also enable X-Ray to see the curve more clearly. When you're done, simply convert all objects back to meshes to apply the curve modifier. And now let's remove the excess polygons. With X-Ray enabled, select the ones you don't need and press X to delete faces. For the bottom section, I'll utilize the Lasso Select tool. You can find it on the left side, press T to open the sidebar and hold a long mouse click on the bottom. Or press W to cycle through the Select tools. Let's select the faces and press X to delete faces. Now let's apply the Shrink Wrap modifier to stick our object to the handled surface. Again, we'll first apply this to a single object and then copy the modifier to the rest. So add the Shrink Wrap modifier and select the target object. Choose Project as the Wrap method. Enable Snap Above Surface and check Negative. We use the project method because it sort of preserves the topology. For instance, if you compare it with nearest surface point, you'll see a significant difference. Now let's replicate the modifier across all other objects. Looking good so far, let's add some thickness using the solidify modifier. Let's increase the thickness in the negative space and select only rim. By the way, don't just replicate my settings. Experiment with the properties and find settings that suit your liking. Now let's copy the modifiers to all other objects. And as you can see here, the ribbons only extend in one direction now. Something must be wrong. The first thing I always do when debugging is checking the normals. This is a good practice that you should also adopt. Let's activate the face orientation overlay and search for any inverted normals. And there we go. I suspect this is the result of using a negative angle with the screw modifier. But I won't delve into whether this is true or not, because I don't care and I'm lazy. Let's fix the normals by selecting all our objects, going into edit mode, selecting all vertices by pressing A and then shift N to invert them. Next modifier. We will now use the displacement modifier to create these overlaps. So select your first object again and add the modifier. And you can already see what this modifier does. Let's reduce the strength and rearrange our modifiers. The order of the modifiers is crucial as it always results in different outcomes. In our case, we aim to displace the original vertices. But when the modifiers comes after the solidify, it also displaces the vertices created by it. So we need to move it up by one position. Now we can fine tune the strength. The goal is to find a maximum displacement for our overlaps, meaning the highest position it will ever reach. If you don't understand, keep watching a little bit more before you try it yourself. Let's first copy the modifiers to all objects. To control the height of our mesh when creating overlaps, we use a vertex group and utilize weight painting. The reason behind this is that it's a non-destructive process and we'll need to adjust the height back and forth, which would be quite difficult for instance with sculpting. When you select your first object again, you can create a vertex group in the object data properties by clicking the plus button here. Vertex groups act like masks for modifiers, which you can paint in weight paint mode. After adding the vertex group, select it in your modifier. Now, create a vertex group for all of your objects. And when you copy the modifier, the displacement modifier will automatically select the vertex group you created, provided the vertex group name is the same on every object. Now comes the most tedious part. You have to paint in the weights. Let's start with our first object. Select it and switch to weight paint mode. In weight paint mode, you can adjust the radius and strength similar to sculpt mode. Press F and drag your mouse to adjust the radius and Shift F for the strength. Here you can transition between different objects without needing to change the mode. Blender doesn't have a built-in hotkey for toggling between adding and subtracting weights, so we will use the weight adjustment option here, keeping the strength at 1. Your next task is to start with your initial object and color every second diamond in red. If you go overboard, set the weight to 0 and remove it. Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect at first sight. We'll smooth out and fine-tune the weights later on. This is somewhat like blocking out the general shape. The level of detail you can paint is dependent on the number of vertices. 
If you're not concerned about police, simply add a subdivision modifier. For a close-up animation, for instance, I'd opt for a high poly count with a lot of detail. Let's actually add a subdivision modifier with a level of 2, placing it at the first position in our modifier stack. Copy these settings to all other objects and apply them one by one. In one of the next parts in the Cobra 1 series, you'll see how I create a low poly version from this. But for now, our focus is to create a high quality, high poly version for baking details from later on. Once you've finished weight painting your first object, click on Weights, Smooth. You'll be using the Smooth function a lot, so I recommend adding it to your quick favorites with a right click. Now you can promptly activate this function by pressing Q. Do not mess up with the order of the overlaps, choose the object between two higher parts as the next painting target. Paint in the weights between the two and alternate back and forth to paint every second diamond. Continue this process for all objects. Once you've completed your very first pass of painting and smoothing on every object, we'll begin to fine tune the weights. Our aim is to achieve a nice overlap without issues like this one. First off, we'll need to reduce the weight strength. Using a weight of 1 made it easier to paint and see what you are doing, but it doesn't yield the best results in the end. For this, we'll utilize the levels and adjust the chain to roughly 0.6. Make sure to add this to your quick favorites for easy access. Then apply it with a gain of 0.6. Smooth it out using a high iteration count, I used about 20 in my case, and repeat this process for all other objects. For the final part, we'll manually highlight the edges by increasing and decreasing weights. Since we've reduced our weight strength to 0.6, we'll also have to adjust the painting weight to 0.6. To remove it, set it back to 0. Alright, after about half an hour I decided to call it a day. Of course, creating a production-ready model takes more than just one or two hours. Depending on your end goal, be it for a game engine or animation, it might take several days to achieve satisfactory results. But this is your choice. I'm doing this just for educational purposes. Let's move on to the easier part, the upper and lower ribbon. For this, we'll use the Curves Extra Objects add-on, which you can enable in the properties. This add-on provides a lot of extra features that you can utilize. We will use the Knots SpiroFit feature, which creates a spiral curve around a selected object. To do this, I'll duplicate two face loops from my Cobra wand using Shift-D, then separate it from the object by pressing P, Selection. With our newly created object selected, we can now generate the SpiroFit curve. You can tweak its geometry by adjusting these settings. Once you're done, switch to edit mode and refine the control points to create a pleasing shape. If you're finding this challenging, I recommend revisiting my tutorial on curves before proceeding. You can now delete the object you used to generate the spiral curve and we'll move on to the knot. For the knot, I'll use the last control point of my curve, extrude it and adjust the control points. This is like a final boss battle. If you can craft a beautiful knot with a curve, you've mastered the skill. To save some time, you can duplicate the top one, move it down and make adjustments. Try to add some variations. Duplicated elements can seem quite unappealing. Once you're satisfied, select all your objects and convert them into a mesh for UV unwrapping and texturing. With all that said, I hope you've learned a lot and had a great time. Until next time!